The handover is now complete at two of the eastern oil ports. And Libya's fragile government says a deal with armed groups doesn't concede to their original demands of regional autonomy and a share in oil sales. But part of the deal is a cash settlement for upkeep of the ports, including back pay for its guards. Now there are claims that by effectively compensating the gunmen, the government may end up in further trouble with other protest groups. Some of them actually uh, already closed the uh, pipelines feeding those ports. And uh, I am afraid that uh, we may have created another problem by having this deal. Mr. Mehirig says millions of dollars have been thrown at the problem. The acting oil minister is also uneasy. He believes while it was crucial to avoid confrontation with the armed groups, there now needs to be massive investment in security to protect all of Libya's oil installations. Paying uh, money to solve the problem, firefighting, uh, system, uh, this is not the right way. The security issue is this is the first priority and a long-term plan for, uh, for, for the future. Libya's justice minister is defending the deal, negotiated through intermediaries, as the best way of achieving a peaceful solution. It really is crucial that the deal works. Politically, Libya is going through its most unstable phase since the revolution three years ago. The caretaker government is teetering on the brink of collapse. Its ministers threatened to resign en masse unless the General National Congress gave it a clear mandate. It responded by giving the Prime Minister Abdullah al thini until next Tuesday to form a new government. But there's no guarantee he can manage it in that time frame. And if he does, no certainty as to whether the Congress will give its approval. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Tripoli.